Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. Happy holidays. Um, this is the first time I'm doing this. I'm kind of on my own. Uh, well, I'm not on my own. I have Allie here to help me for my uh, my launch and doing this. So uh, let me just cover my face so I don't see myself while I'm talking to you because that'll be distracting. I won't look at anything else. Uh, I already have questions, which I'm kind of excited about. Uh, I'd love to know that you're out there. I'm not just talking to myself, although people would say that I'm a talker and I could even talk if I'm just talking to myself. So it's interesting. I was going to start by uh, talking about probiotics and the first question from Angela is that there's new research about probiotics, and there is. And the question that uh, we wrote an article about, and hopefully we'll get it up on paulistrice.com really soon, is how dirty is dirty? How dirty do you have to be? So we know that what probiotics is all about are the healthy, important uh, bacteria that your body and your skin needs to be healthy. In fact, the world of the research is so complex. Just a few years ago, the research actually said there were 200 of these good and bad bacteria. By the way, we need bad bacteria as much as we need good bacteria, which I know sounds really strange, but that's what lives on your skin and lives in your body. And in healthy balance, you are a healthy person. And the research about what it does for you for anti-aging and the research about what it does for the skin the whole kit and caboodle of you is incredible uh, when you look at the benefit of probiotics. Now, the issue is, is what happens when you put it on your skin. And you're going to hear a lot of talk about, oh, so oh, let me finish. Sorry, I'm wandering off. So that 200 good and bad bacteria that they thought were there just a few years ago, now they've identified 10,000. So that's exciting. That's complicated. And the thing you need to know is everybody's what they call your microbiome. In other words, the bacteria in the different amounts that live on your skin and live on in your body is unique to you. Not everybody has the same probiotics, this, the same good and bad bacteria. Yours is in constant flow and flux. That's what's so stunning. So what we know about probiotics for skin care are certain ones have been identified, not that they alter or affect your microbiome, but that they work as incredible anti-inflammatory agents. And what we're looking at and what we're very excited about is something called prebiotics. And I encourage you to take a look at the research about prebiotics. Prebiotics are mostly sugars and carbohydrates, whether you uh, healthy sugars and healthy carbohydrates, uh, but for the skin, topically, uh, ingredients like uh, different forms of sugars, too complicated to go into right now. Um, and those actually help develop the probiotics that help your skin and when you look at the research that help your body. I think that's fascinating. I love it. I think that the claims you're seeing out there about we can build your, you know, we'll put the right probiotics on your skin. What are the, there's 10,000 of them. You can't get those. And, and they're identifying more and more. And the ones that are in balance for your skin, a skincare product can't know. But prebiotics and certain probiotics that work as anti-inflammatory agents on the skin is just uh, fascinating, fascinating research. So uh, let me. So that's that's what I know, and now I'm going to try to figure out how I can look at other questions. So Angela, I hope that helped you. Uh, Marie, is it possible that benzoyl peroxide causes premature aging? I've been using the 2.5 percent for years and feel like I'm getting wrinkles before my peers. Benzoyl peroxide is not in any way causing uh, your wrinkles. Uh, not not possible. What's causing your wrinkles is either well, actually, it's it's many things. It's mostly sun damage. Uh, for years and years and years, having sun damage builds up, uh, and none of us were good about sun protection. Even when you are good about sun protection, if you've gotten any amount of a tan, you're not using it 365 days a year. I can go on and on. You got sun damage, and you're going to get wrinkles. The other thing is that is very significant is the shape of your face. The wider the face 
the less wrinkles you're going to have because you have the architecture, the bones to keep the skin. Think of the bones in your face as a drape and then think of the drape as the bones are too narrow to hold up the skin or you have bone loss, then the draping uh, makes it worse. And then there's just some people who have extra fat pads and that starts pulling the skin down. So there's many reasons why skin ages and benzoyl peroxide isn't one of them. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that. If you're worried that it's making it worse, then I would just move over to, instead of using the 2.5% benzoyl peroxide to keep your uh, your breakouts in check, then try a 2% uh, BHA, uh, uh, my 2% BHA liquid. We're famous for that. Uh, I think you might want to also consider our 9% BHA for just in general, uh, maybe for, you know, blotchy uh, spot treatment and see how that works for you. Um, Marie, didn't Brian talk about that in the last airing? I don't know what Marie is referring to. Let me go up. I keep going to the wrong scroll. God, I got to learn this because I love doing it. Uh, uh, Kristen, Kristen, you're asking, I know PC recommends against witch hazel. Does that include alcohol-free witch hazel products? So many people swear by it. A lot of people swear by a lot of things. That doesn't make it good for you. Uh, people love cigarettes, doesn't make that good. People love getting a tan, doesn't make that good. People love eating chocolate cake. I love eating chocolate cake. I can rave about the cheesecake cheesecake. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to take uh, some uh, a bunch of kids I know out to see the new Jurassic Park movie on Thursday. I'm so excited, and we're going to all go to the Cheesecake Factory. No, the new Jurassic, uh, not, I'm not Jurassic Park, Jumanji. I can't believe I said Jurassic Park. The new Jumanji, I'm a, such a fan of the original Jumanji, Jumanji movie with Robin Williams. And now Dwayne Johnson, uh, The Rock, is doing the new one. And I'm going to go see it. And we're going to go to the Cheesecake Factory. And yes, I'm going to have a piece of cheesecake, a small piece. And I know it's bad for me. And I'm going to rave about it. It doesn't make a good. So that's a long way of saying that people swearing about it doesn't mean you need to jump on that bad wagon. So alcohol-free is definitely better without knowing what the rest of the ingredients are, but if it contains witch hazel, witch hazel in of itself is almost always processed with alcohol. And so witch hazel in its forms that are used in cosmetics, is, in skincare products, is often already have witch hazel. Now, without knowing the specific product, let's say it just has a witch hazel extract uh, meaning a plant extract, and let's assume that that one isn't suspended in alcohol. The problem is, is witch hazel in of itself is an irritant. It causes problems. It constricts on skin. It isn't the healthiest ingredient. Doesn't really have anti uh, uh, antioxidant properties. Doesn't have soothing. Not you know. You really want to reduce redness on skin. There's there's nothing about witch hazel as an ingredient that I would put at the top of my list. We don't formulate with it because we don't formulate with anything that might be a potential or potential skin aggravator. So I wouldn't encourage you to use it. So, uh, Anna, Anna, you're asking, you're, uh, you have blotchy skin, you have colors on your skin you don't want, and it's post-red marks. So, uh, red marks are not the same as other color marks and in, in terms of um, skin brightening products. So, uh, when it comes to improving those, the, the goal then is to really reduce any kind of uh, any kind of irritation, anything that could make the skin redder. That's probably one of the more primary things. The other thing is uh, is to stick with your BHA. However, however, we have a new 10% AHA product. It's available, right? Oh, how exciting! That uses a blend of AHAs and BHA. And what we're hearing from people is they are finding. It's 10% concentration of these mixed acids that because the acids work on different levels, the BHA being the deepest, the glycolic acid, the lactic acid, the malic acid, and on and on, um, work on the different layers to improve how skin moves up and out, meaning up and then get off of the skin, shed. So... If you're thinking that the BHA isn't quite working for you, you might want to uh, give that 
a try. I think actually I'd love to know what you think about it. Go on paulaschoice.com if you decide to give it a try. I would love to know if you uh, found that it works. And of course, if it you feel it's not any better than your uh, BHA that you're using from Paula's Choice, then you return it and it's just fine. Um, so Chris is saying, uh, Chrissy, you're saying I like to layer different sunscreens. Do I need to wait in between layers? And the answer is no, you do not. Well, actually, let me say it this way, maybe for a few seconds. Whatever you do, you have to allow it to absorb. You don't have to wait an extraordinary, extraordinary long time. However, if it is a sunscreen that you're layering that contains titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, you do have to wait for it to absorb or you're going to be like me and you have it on your car handle, you have it on your coat. I, have, I mean, I'm always washing the cuffs of my black uh, my black coat, especially this time of year in Seattle, uh, because I get titanium dioxide and zinc oxide all over it because that's the sunscreen I use on my hands. So yes, absolutely. Uh, titanium dioxide, zinc oxide uh, is the primary sunscreen I use. And then I actually, I do layer it um, even uh, uh, higher levels. I'm just very neurotic about not getting discolorations uh, from the sun. So yes, do it, wait for it to absorb. You don't have to wait between. It just all needs to absorb. Um, let's, oh, this is a good question. Hi, Paula, what can be done? Oh, you know, when I do that, I start seeing myself and get distracted. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to stop doing that. Uh, okay, now back. All right. Perry, Perry. Hi, Paula. Hello. What can be done blackheads and, for blackheads and clogged pores if my skin can't handle salicylic acid? Oh, and my AHA gel gives me a glow, but does, oh, mm. uh-oh, that's a hard one. Oh, wait, I think I'm back on. It says good again. Is it going to gonna go back on? I can see myself, but I'm still choppy, and I don't see any questions. There were the questions. I think I'm back, but I'm not sure. He's on his way up. Paula, say something. Something somebody's saying, say something. Really? Okay. So maybe maybe you're hearing me and I'm just seeing myself in a like um, in a very choppy. So uh, is the stream choppy for anyone else? Uh, so uh, we're at Perry's yeah. So question. Perry's question. So I'm just, I'm going to hope you guys are hearing me. I'll just keep talking, um, and I'm just looking very choppy, and I'm really sorry about that. Uh, so the question was, if my skin can't, if my skin can't handle salicylic acid, and my AHA gel uh, does, you know, makes my skin look great, but does nothing for my clogged pores. And then I got I got stumped. That's a really hard question because there's not a lot of great ingredients. Uh, Actually, the only other ingredient that I can think of for clogged pores would be azelaic acid. Um, that would be something you would look for. Uh, I would go online uh, to beautypedia.com and take a look. We're selling an azelaic acid product now in, uh, in Europe, at Paula's Choice Europe. It won't be here in the United States for... Do you know when our azelaic acid product is coming to the United States? Uh oh, so now I'm going to be in trouble for mentioning that. But um, there are other companies that sell azelaic acid. It has to be in a high percentage. So you want to see it at the top of the label on the product. Um, have you tried lower strengths of the salicylic acid? I, I, you might have you only tried 2%. Uh, Perry, you might want to try. Uh, I just mentioned our new AHA product that has a little bit of BHA. Uh, and then also the AHAs and see if that can work for you. You might want to try the salicylic acid and just kind of, um, uh, you know, alternate, see if you use it less often. It's so difficult. The, the, the Really, the dealing with blackheads is just very, very, very tricky. I wish I had. But th those are, that's my best, those are my best options. Um, I have, a, a Steve, Steve is asking, I have occasional acne, so brought your 2% uh, BHA liquid, but my skin is sensitive to it, and I can only use once a day or every day. Thus, I continue to break out a bit. What should I do? Then you got to try, so use it every other day, 
Uh, and it's completely understandable. I know that some people, uh, the 2% BHA liquid can be uh, sensitizing. So uh, do consider on those alternate days using our 2.5% or 5% benzyl peroxide product from Blue's Choice Clear. Uh, and then the other thing you can consider doing, which might be worth it, um, is to see what happens. So, uh, really? Oh, well, then I won't say anything nasty. Um, uh, how would it not be stopped for everyone if it's... If it's, if it's stopped for everyone. Okay. Well, All right. I'll just, I'll just keep talking. All right. <laughs> we'll give it a try. I, I, so I apologize. Technical difficulties here at, uh, at Paula's Choice. So, um, uh, but not technical difficulties for the products. That's good news. Um, so the question was about how to deal with the 2% BHA liquid if you're sensitive to, to it. And then I said every other day, and then on the days you're, you know, on the alternate days, then try the 2.5% benzyl peroxide. That would be, and go a long way. And then uh, daily the, pore refining treatment. right, and then the resist daily pour refining treatment is also 2% BHA, but in a lighter weight base. What that means is, is it is less penetrating. So for your skin type, it might work better and still get you uh, pretty much uh, the same results. So uh, I have a, oh, uh, Iwi, Iwi, mm -hmm. that's an interesting name. Hello, Iwi from Poland. Oh, EV, maybe it's EV from Poland because that W, I believe, is a V sound. Um, so greetings from Poland. How to start using retinol at age 35? Well, you can start using retinol at any point. Uh, young or old, uh, it has phenomenal benefit for skin. Uh, you just start using it. You add it to your skincare routine. You're going to want to make sure that you're not using any other products that might contain ir uh, anything that irritates your skin, anything that is sensitizing, because uh, retinol, especially in high concentrations, can be, for a small percentage of people, uh, can cause a reaction, a sensitizing reaction. But the benefit of working a retinol product into your skincare routine, uh, Paula's Choice has two of them, one in a 1% in our clinical line, a 1% in our uh, retinol and our booster group of products. And we also have lots of products with far less concentrations, uh, one in our serum with retinol, uh, that is all a consideration. So you can start with the lower strengths, build up to the higher strengths. Some people, a lot of people, just jump in with the higher strengths. Um, you can use it on its own, depending on how it works for you. Paula's Choice products in particular, our retinol product is not just retinol. You never want to just rely on one skincare ingredient any more than you would want to rely on one food to eat for your diet. That wouldn't be healthy. Um, so uh, depending on how you want to do it, you can start lower strength, build up, jump in higher strength, maybe start every other day, and then just wear it under your other products. The rule of thumb for application of skincare products is you start with, after your cleanser, toner, and exfoliant, you go to the most liquid product to the thicker product. That's a general rule. Start with the thinnest consistency to the thickest consistency, and that works best for most skin types. I think I need to learn to do this. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, even, uh, let's see. I just want to thank you for all your information. Bed Tan, also from Poland. Uh, what do I know how to say in Polish? I know how to say dobra. How do, that means good. So dobra, but I, I know there's a way to say hello, but I don't remember. But dobra uh, from me here in, and happy holidays. Uh, I've noticed uh, you sign some of the PC products, but not all. Do you see sign the ones you personally work on? Oh, that's an interesting question. Or uh, is there a different reason for the distinction? So... Um, as with any growing company, and we have grown significantly over the past few years, uh, there's all kinds of discussions about how do you design your products. And uh, so I work on almost all of the products. It's just a handful that I haven't worked on over the years. But the Polish Choice products, I'm a formulator. I do skincare research. It's what I've lived my life doing, and my products are my products. So the signature is more on um, certain products has more to do with a marketing decision uh, than it has to do with anything else. In fact, we're coming out with a beautiful new redesign, and I, uh, the quotes will be off all of products. It'll take about a year for everything uh, to cycle through. So rather than writing quotes on products, I'm going to be talking to you more, which is what I 
really, really love. Uh, so I get very red from the resist weightless toner. What do you think is happening? Uh, well, what I think is happening is that toner isn't uh, for you, Andrea. I think you need to consider uh, another toner. Um, you know, the very nature of skincare, just like anything else, uh, whether it's plants in our environment, dogs or cats, there are things you will be personally sensitized to. You know, I'm allergic to dogs. That doesn't make dogs bad. It just means I need to stay away from dogs. So uh, this toner, some aspect of it, my resist toner, some aspect of what it contains, and it's very hard to tell when you have 30 ingredients, antioxidants, and all kinds of softening and smoothing and anti-wrinkle, uh, you know, diminish the appearance of wrinkle ingredients. So it's very difficult to say which one is causing you a problem, but clearly it is causing you a problem. You need to return it and uh, have my customer service people here at Paula's Choice help you find a good alternative for your skin type. Uh, um, so Sarah is starting uh, isotretinoin in seven days, very nervous. I can understand that. Somebody who has taken isotretinoin uh, many, many years ago, I can understand being nervous. Uh, hopefully you are under the guidance of a wonderful, lovely uh, dermatologist and uh, who is open to communicating with you on a regular basis as you might see changes in levels of dryness, which is uh, most typical, and they can uh, help you uh, walk through it. If you have any questions about Paula's Choice products uh, after talking to your dermatologist, then you can call us and uh, we'll uh, walk you through uh, your Paula's Choice skincare routine. Uh, Paula, hi, I'm starting to develop jowls. Whoa, not so much fun. My doctor says I'm still too young to consider surgery. Um, you know, that really is a discussion with your surgeon and not me. But I will tell you my personal philosophy. I get why he's saying you're too young. Uh, and clearly nobody needs surgery. Uh, there is lots of risks in surgery. Um, as somebody who has had a lower facelift to deal with my jowls, uh, how old was I? How old was I when I had my, my, I was in my 50s. So without any opinion about age, and uh, I would encourage you to listen to your, uh, your surgeon, given that he makes money if he cuts and pastes you, and if he doesn't want to, he must have a darn good reason for it. Um, as, a, as a rule, because nobody needs cosmetic surgery. Lord knows I don't need cosmetic surgery. It is elective. It is an option. You don't die without having cosmetic surgery. And so when people say that when I was making a decision to have my cosmetic surgery, my lower facelift, people saying, oh, why do you need that? Why do you need that? And I'm, I was thinking, you know, I don't need that. If I've waited to the point <laughs> where people are saying to me, oh, Paula, you really need to get your facelift. Your, your jowl is hanging down on your neck. Um, then I think you need, you know, waiting for people to say, go get your face done isn't the goal. It isn't about needing. It is about a personal decision between you and your su surgeon. I got to say, I'm very impressed in this world of doctors doing cosmetic corrective procedures and surgery. Uh, I often see them saying, yes, I can do that for the sake of getting more patients versus what is a really rational reason uh, to do something like surgery? Uh, Katie, Katie is saying something lovely. She's saying, uh, love your product so much. Oil booster or omega serum for dehydrated areas of combination skin from winter related uh, causes like heat and dry air. She loves it. I love you too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Ruth uh, is asking, here in Asia, masks are very popular. Any chance of a hyaluronic travel mask? Oh, don't get me started on masks. So Paula's Choice does have masks, and I did make them, and I'm proud of them. Um, and I know there is a huge belief that masks are vitally important, and they are the skincare product to use. Um, so I'm going to shock you, Ruth, and I'm going to say, while I love my masks, and I think for the people who like to mask, they are great, and I think uh, the one for dry skin, the one that is more hydrating, is one you can consider. 
But personally, uh, when you're traveling or personally when you're taking care of your skin, I'm far more concerned about what you do every day and that the products you use help you get out of the bathroom fast. And I know a lot of my East Asian customers, and I got a lot of them. I love you in Korea and China, and you guys have been, uh, Hong Kong, you guys have been wonderful to me. Um, and But the masking every day and taking 20 minutes uh, to mask, and then all it takes to get into bed, I recommend masking occasionally as a treat and not regularly. So that's a long way to say I would rather you use my hyaluronic acid booster, my omega serum, uh, and uh, my, uh, and I'm blanking out, oh, and my plant oil as a way to deal with your super dry skin and taking care of your skin, not just when you travel, but all the time to deal with dehydration, particularly this time of year. Uh, and other problems that it comes to skin to get the smoothest skin possible. What else do we have here? Uh, uh, Shady Lady, do you recommend your cleansing oil for oily skin prone to breakouts? Um, so if as long as you're using products uh, for breakouts like uh, the clear products for 2.5% uh, ben, uh, benzoyl peroxide, 5% benzoyl peroxide, or and the BHA products, um, then for a cleansing routine, the cleansing oil actually cleanses the face better than the cleansing oil sounds like. Um, but it also leaves the face, the face soft. So my suggestion is that if you're somebody who tends to have problem skin and also some dryness, then you might want to consider trying the cleansing oil and seeing how it does for you. Um, the, 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 the risk of it causing problems, sure, any of us who have problem skin, I have problem skin, I know that I try things and, you know, especially here at Paula's Choice when we're formulating new products and testing them out and they cause problems. So, uh, but once you're a Paula's Choice customer, you don't have, you know, you don't, you, you can, by the way, you can all, uh, become part of the, our panel testing group and uh, if you qualify then you can become part of that but that's a very long way of saying that if it causes problems for you then you return it and you go back to the Paula's Choice cleanser hopefully it's a skin balancing cleanser or the clear cleanser to help round out your skincare routine. Uh, Chanel girl, Chanel girl, do non-fragrant plant oils provide enough antioxidants if they come in dark pumped bottles. I love you too, Chanel girl. Um, that's actually a really interesting question. Um, so the plant oils, all plant oils to one degree or another provide brilliant antioxidant, uh, have brilliant antioxidant properties. When it's in a dark bottle, that very much helps keep the, air, the light out, which can deteriorate the ingredients. The issue is if the container top, that's really what you want to think about. How wide is that container top? You really want to use products, any product, that keeps your fingers out of the container. That's really the big deal, is to keep air out and keep your fingers out. Fingers transfer, you know, skins, you know, little, you know, your skin cells, they they, you know, pass dirt on, there's the air issue that oxidizes the ingredients. So anything that restricts air, anything that prevents light from getting in is going to keep your, the integrity of the ingredients stable. Uh, Payal is asking how to maintain face bone structures, face bone structures as we age. So, and she's asking about retinol. Retinol, uh, no skincare ingredients, no skincare ingredients impact bone structure, nothing. Uh, uh, bone deterioration, uh, the, the, the um, osteoporosis or just getting older uh, and how that impacts your bone is a medical discussion with uh, your uh, physician. 
Now, obviously, you can go online and you can take a look at the research about for your body and uh, how weightlifting preserves bones. There's, but it, it's, uh, but not for your face. You can't weightlift your face. Um, there's no facial exercise that will impact your bones one way or the other on your face. So, but for your body, that is something uh, you would uh, discuss with um, uh, with your physician uh, in terms of medical uh, care. Uh, to protect your bones, which uh, would impact diet and would impact, uh, depending on if you have osteoporosis, uh, you know, there's medications you can take. And then, yes, consequently, that actually improves the bones all over the place. So having said that, that's one of the things you can do. Uh, uh, Gilad is asking, what's the most skin-soothing and anti-sensitizing product in Paula's Choice? Whoa. Well, you know, uh, Gilad, I formulate all my products to be non-sensitizing. It is a very significant aspect of skincare. Even my BHA products, uh, because of the nature of BHA, BHA uh, is related to aspirin, right? Aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid and BHA is salicylic acid, uh, which carries over some of that non-sensitizing, calming impact uh, on the skin. However, um, probably if you're really talking about a serum that soothes, if you are prone to redness, my Calm Serum, I think, would be a great idea. My Omega Serum would be a great idea. Actually, any of my serums are really loaded with antioxidants and soothing ingredients. Probably my Calm Serum but again, that most statement uh, is, is a little challenging for me, given how many products I've formulated. But uh, for your skin, depending on what you're struggling with, you might want to start there and, and see how it works for you. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, Stephanie is asking, should I only use mineral-based sunscreens for her uh, uh, acne-prone skin? So, uh, again, assuming you're taking good care of your skin with the 2% BHA uh, exfoliant and leave-on exfoliant and a 2.5 or 5% benzoyl peroxide product, you can use them separately or together. It just depends on your skin type. For my skin type, uh, I do better with just 2% BHA. Uh, I don't do as well these days. I used to, but at this stage in my life, I don't do as well using 2.5 or 5% benzoyl peroxide. I, I don't need it as much. Um, so um, what sunscreens work with any skin type is tricky uh, because what makes you have a reaction can be very different from somebody else. The best sunscreen is the one that is SPF 30 or greater that you will use daily. And that means experimenting to see what works best for you. And so there are sunscreens that are mixed. Some have titanium dioxide with synthetic sunscreen agents. That can work well for you. There are some that are just synthetic, and that can, in, in very thin, lightweight bases. Uh, I do have a sunscreen in my clear line that is, well, actually, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. I made it um, that I would encourage you um, uh, to try. And then uh, Sane is asking, Hi, Paula. Hello. How much? Uh, how many times a day can I use uh, BHA 2% liquid uh, during uh, a, a surprise breakout? What is recommended? So what is recommended uh, is what works for you. So for me, if I get a bad breakout uh, and uh, I can use a 2% BHA several times a day for a particularly ugly uh, looking one, um, but mostly uh, if I'm going through a bad breakout, it's just I'll do morning and night. But for me, uh, if it's just my average kind of breakouts going on, then I just use it at night. It's one of the things you have to experiment with to see uh, what works for you. Uh, Sarah is saying, oh, I love sunscreen questions. Sarah is saying, uh, studies use one teaspoon of sunscreen on the face. I've tried using that much and it feels... First of all, it's not studies. It, that one teaspoon thing is not related. You know, how much sunscreen you're going to put on your face is not related in any way, shape, or form to a study. That is a guess. 
you the the studies that everyone is quoting is based on how much patch sunscreen you put on for testing an SPF. They put it on, they stick it in a sun booth, and they see what happens to skin. So they extrapolate that. A lot of scientists do a lot of numbers, and they extrapolate that to your body size. The problem is everybody's body size is different. You have a big face, you have a little face, you have a bigger body, you have a little body. How much you use is very dependent on you and your face. It's one of the reasons why I love layering sunscreen. So I don't have to do this one teaspoon or really layer up. That's why I love layering different products like uh, my moisturizer. Well, I have many moisturizers with sunscreen uh, appropriate for different skin types. And then a follow-up, my primer with sunscreen. I think that's a brilliant way to get extra sunscreen on your face and make sure that you're covered. But there's nothing about that. That one teaspoon thing just drives me nuts. I just, nuts, nuts, nuts. Uh, Christina is asking, oh, Son, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm glad I gave you good advice. Um, so uh, how do I combat the dry, flaky skin I get in the winter to combat my breakouts using uh, BHA lotion and 5% benzoyl peroxide? So that's, that's actually a really interesting question. So dryness from using any products that have active ingredients that are going after, uh, you know, problem skin um, can be tricky. But I, and just anybody who has dryness this time of year can be tricky. But the, the general things I look at is what cleanser are you using? Are you using any scrubs? Are you using anything abrasive? Are you using any of the scrub brushes that have a very rough edge to them? Um, are you using any drying, absorbing products? Are you using mattifying type primers, mattifying type foundations? So what you might have to alternate change during this time of year, depending on your skin type. So if, if the 5% uh, benzoyl peroxide from my clear line and my 2% BHA from my clear line is keeping your uh, breakouts, your acne under control, then I would want you to take a look at trying, uh, say, my cleanser from my skin balancing line, the toner from the skin balancing line, my hyaluronic acid booster, perhaps my omega serum over the dry areas, and see how your skin does with that. Please make sure you're not doing anything that's causing a problem uh, with your skin type. Um, I think that uh, that would be the most important thing uh, to consider and watch how you do. Uh, Angel is saying something about a one quarter teaspoon. You got guys, stop measuring. Because if you got a small face, it doesn't matter. The rule of thumb is that, and, I, and Angel, for, forgive me if I just sounded like I was yelling at you. I, the measurement thing just drives me crazy. You put on sunscreen that you can see that you've applied it in an even layer over the skin and have it absorb. And then for the best protection to make sure you get double backup, you layer, you put on another sunscreen. But if you are putting on a good enough layer that you see it and then you help it absorb into skin, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Again, if you have a little face, a quarter teaspoon, a teaspoon, any size is going to be too much. You put on according to your face size and what other sunscreen products you're going to be putting on and that'll help you get through it. And I just jumped up and it said I'm not streaming again but I'm just going to assume some people are seeing me so I'm going to ignore that. Uh, let's see where am I? Who haven't I answered? Um, let's, uh, let's see. You know what's interesting with your questions uh, and I love your questions is uh, the 2% BHA is an interesting product we make. Uh, first of all, we're the only company that has as many BHA products as we have, and we're one of the few companies, uh, actually, we might even be one of the only companies that have as many sunscreen related to different skin types from the neck up as opposed to body sunscreen products for the neck up to make sure you get sunscreen on your face. Um, Skin type is very important for product formulations. Whenever I'm developing products, I'm always uh, developing products thinking about your skin type. 
and, and that all started from my own skin type issues, right? I have normal to oily skin, uh, mostly oily, very little normal. Uh, and now at this age, my eye area is dry, but pretty much I'm uh, an, an, an oily skin combination skin girl. And what that means is if I use products that are very rich, very rich lotion, very rich creamy, it causes problem, clogged pores, you know, accelerates whatever, you know, problem skin I have. So when I started formulating products, you know, this was all from my research when I was doing my books. Some of you may know that I did a series of books uh, for many years called Don't Go to the Cosmetics Counter Without Me. That's now uh, part of beautypedia.com. Um, and th the need to have products that were designed for your skin type is something I see a lot of companies not paying attention to. So when you have normal to oily combination skin, you really want to think about the other products you're using and how lightweight they are. So um, in terms of 2% BHA, um, sometimes you might have to go, and so that was a long way of saying, the reason I have so many is so you can find the one that is best for your skin type, that is good for you. I do believe uh, that the research is pretty clear that uh, when you use a leave-on gentle exfoliant that your skin gets better. Uh, so many aspects of skin does better when you don't have built up layers of dead skin sitting around on the surface. Your glow, your smoothness, skin tone, clogged pores uh, for 2% BHA breakouts, uh, on and on and on. So finding a way to use it Perhaps you need to experiment again, like I said, with one of my other BHA products, particularly the one from my Resist line uh, for normal toily skin, which is in a lighter weight base than the 2% liquid. Perhaps this time of year, that's the one you want to change to because it is less penetrating, uh, so it's less intense on the skin. That might be uh, something to consider. And then in terms of sunscreen, your questions, I just love your questions about sunscreen. And I love that some of you are really concerned, uh, and hopefully all of you are really concerned about getting on enough. And I love that you're thinking about layering and thinking about the amount. Um, the, the major thing uh, is to keep in mind that it is the dedication to wearing it, that 365 days a year, you put on enough so that you can see it. It has to be SPF 30 or greater. Um, you know, lately, uh, and, and whether or not you use pure mineral, I do personally prefer pure mineral on my skin. My skin is happier. I think it does better in the sun. There's no research to prove that. It, sunscreens are sunscreens, and they show the same results. But personally, my experience is I do better uh, with the mineral sunscreens, but that can be different uh, for everybody. That takes some amount of experimentation to see what works for you. All right, let me see uh, what else we have here. Um, uh, as I'm scrolling down and learning how to do this, uh, LKPX98, that's an interesting handle. No matter what I do, I can't seem to completely get rid of dry patches in the areas where I get acne. I use drier oils and hydrating products like hyaluronic acid, and I still struggle. I understand. And then I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. You know, one of the limitations of not being able to talk to you in person, and but your questions are just brilliant and I love them, is I can't ask what else you're using. And so one of the things I see people doing um, is using hot water, uh, harsh cleansers, scrubs, uh, loofahs. Uh, there's all kinds of scrub brushes now that, you know, people, you know, kind of attack their face. Uh, they, you can be overzealot with BHA and use it several times a day, which would uh, make dry patches show up. Um, the, the cleansers have to be gentle. If you do want a manual uh, polishing effect, make sure you get all your makeup off, which is very important. Then a gentle washcloth is a great option, a very soft washcloth. If you're into using the, the scrub brushes, I don't want you to scrub. So just use the softest head ones. Nothing should abrade or scratch at the skin. You want to make sure that the other products you're using, and if you're using products with high fragrance, 
that's just going to make the matters worse on your face because those are sensitizing ingredients, can make dry patches worse. So that's a long way of saying please make sure that all the other products you're using are good for your skin and not making it worse. Then the other thing you can consider doing depending on what you're using is if you're using my 5% benzoyl peroxide product, you can go down to 2.5%. See if that helps you. See if you're if you're using it every day, uh, the 5%, maybe use it once a day. Maybe avoid the areas where you're breaking out and see how you do. So sometimes you need to experiment to see what works for you. Some people just are indeed sensitized uh, to benzoyl peroxide. Uh, and then that is when you step to a dermatologist to see what other options they have uh, to fight uh, the cause uh, of acne. So if uh, benzoyl peroxide ends up not working for you and the 2% BHAs end up not working for you, then you're stepping into the world of skincare, uh, skincare dermatology, uh, and checking with your physician to see uh, what, uh, what can work for you. Uh, Oh, and just one Paula's Choice recommendation. Um, if you're using my hyaluronic acid, uh, is if it's the booster and that's not helping, and the, um, what other product did you say, the dryer oils, um, are you using my, um, I want to make sure I remember, my, my dry, uh, my plant oil from my booster line? I would actually encourage you to consider my Paula's Choice Omega Serum. That has some pretty fascinating research, uh, the, uh, the oils we chose in there, and it actually goes on incredibly light and fluid. That might be something to consider um, over those dry patches that are, are driving you crazy. There's definitely options. Start with not hurting your skin uh, and uh, with drying products and see how you do from there. Uh, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing good. Uh, do I have, uh, let's see, Ruth, a New Yorker in Thailand. Whoop, whoop. Are you having a good time? I bet you it's warmer than New York. Um, I'd shock you with my variety of piece of Paula's Choice products that she has, that she keeps obsessed. Thailand customer service needs training. Uh-oh, I'm on it. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, we do, uh, you know, that it's, it's an interesting Problem, you know, I'll tell you something. Uh, early in my career, when I launched Paula's Choice uh, in 1995, we've been an internet company. I mean, we are in some Nordstrom stores now uh, after not being in stores uh, brick and mortar for, I mean, for years and years. It's just recently we're in Nordstrom's, uh, some Nordstrom stores. Uh, I, I love being on the internet. I love it. It's been perfect for the information we give and provide, the articles, the education, and the products. And I don't have to worry about the crazy things cosmetic salespeople say. Um, that drove, it's it's why I wrote my first book, Blue Eyeshadow Should Be Illegal. I mean, I've written 21 books that are, you know, like 300 pages to 1,400 pages uh, to help talk about getting over the myths, understanding what skincare is really about, how do you really take care of skin, what really works, what isn't, you know, what marketing language is just BS and what is, you know, Paula's Choice and uh, my books, we've always stood for truth and beauty. It's not always what you want to hear, but truth in beauty is beautiful. What's really interesting, uh, people have said to me, well, why are you saying it's the truth? It, you know, you said something was true, you know, uh, a few years ago, and now it's not true anymore. And that's because truth changes. Truth isn't an absolute, at least not in science. And so what I said, and it's one of the reasons I wrote 21 books, it's one of the reasons I've added products and updated products, because as the research changes, then I need to change to take the best care of your skin. Paula's Choice products need to change to take the best care of your skin. We need to rewrite our articles, like we just updated our article on probiotics and prebiotics, to make sure you have the best information. I don't want you wasting your money. I don't want you not, I want you to only take the best care of your skin that means to always provide you truth and beauty. 
doesn't always make me money. I know how easy it is to get seduced by companies saying all kinds of things. But my goal is to provide you the facts. So that's a long way of saying to Ruth, uh, who's uh, my New Yorker in Thailand, that the training program we have for our uh, customer service agents around the world is a challenge. Uh, it's a challenge because we have many different languages. We're in many different countries. Uh, it's hard to monitor the different languages and what they are saying and not. But we do have a very strict program. But now you're telling me that we're not strict enough? I'm on it. Uh, in fact, Ruth, if you want to let me know what they said that you thought was crazy, uh, let me know what they said, and I'm, uh, I'm on it. Uh, the training program we have for our customer service people around the world, which is far less than if they were behind the counters, given thousands of agents behind counters, which is why I started on the Internet and love the Internet, because of how I can be personal with you. I, it's you know my articles, my products, my sharing uh, on YouTube, and over the years how it's uh, grown on Facebook and all the other ways that I can be your customer service agent. I can be your representative and help you, whether you use Paula's Choice or somebody else, have the best skin possible. It's, um, it's been vitally important to me since I started. I've been doing it for, I don't know, 35 years, and I don't think it's about to change. And that was a very long answer to say, Ruth, if you want to share more with me, I'm on uh, seeing what I can do. Uh, in Thailand. Let me see what else is here. Uh, uh, Amy, Amy, you're asking me, my 15-year-old suffers from scalp psoriasis and has hydrocortisone for flare-ups. Is there a PC product that can help maintain control symptoms so the cortisone is less needed? I'm wary of overuse. Oh, I so relate to this. Oh, my God. Um, so um, this is definitely a discussion uh, for your physician. It really is, uh, it is beyond uh, the scope uh, of what uh, I can share. But let me share my own personal experience. I was a young girl uh, with terrible eczema, terrible. In fact, I was 11 years old uh, with debilitating eczema that was over 60% uh, of my body. And um, the only option, uh, and the, you know, they didn't actually, when I was young, they actually didn't know about the skin thinning issues uh, from using hydrocortisone. And I do have prematurely, um, unusually uh, thin skin um, on my hands. And given uh, how little sun damage I have, and I don't have it on other parts of my body, but where I did apply the hydrocortisone, it is an issue. So what I wish I had known back then is the goal is to use, uh, for me, as I look at it now, would have been to use the hydrocortisone um, only to keep the flare-ups at bay and not just all the time. And so, and, and as I look at it now, I could actually feel when the flare-up was coming. And had I known that I didn't need to use it all the time, I would have just used it when it was occurring. Um, but having said that, because I do know that there are people who have chronic conditions that are even worse than mine, and the only way to keep it under control is with everyday use, it's, it's one of those lifestyle health choices because there really is no way with the impact hydrocortisone has on skin, and again, you would want to talk to your dermatologist, dermatologist about this, uh, to really counteract that impact. I wish there was, uh, but with everything I've seen, and again, you would confirm this with your dermatologist, it's a lifestyle choice of keeping something under control and knowing that there could be a negative side effect um, of using it. I understand, Amy, and uh, I know that that's frustrating. I, I feel for uh, what you're working at, uh, working on uh, with your son. Ruth says, I'm phenomenal. Yay, thank you. You know, people, and I, I, I need to wrap up. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm almost at the, the end of my hour. Um, I, people often say to me, uh, oh, people must say this to you all the time, Paula. You probably get tired of hearing it. Believe me, 
First of all, people don't always say nice things to me. I have over my 35 years had people say very nasty things to me. However, when I do get compliments, really, it, it doesn't matter how much or how often. Um, what I know is that we've shared a journey together to, uh, to do truth and beauty, to be a part of that journey of loving your skin you're in, loving what you do to take care of your skin, knowing you're doing the best you can, knowing you're not throwing money out, um, that the pleasure I experience in that journey and that I can share it with you because that's what uh, your thank you, I believe, is telling me, then I know I'm not on the path alone. And for me, that is phenomenally important. And as I you know, go into the new year and look at the years behind me and now the years in front of me, and that I am there with you, thank you for joining me. So what I want to wish all of you is the most beautiful holiday season ever, uh, that 2018 is spectacular for you and your family and your loved ones. And uh, to quote uh, Dickens, God bless us, everyone. Take care, everybody. Have a beautiful new year.